Good evening, Nelson's Chapel. Man, it's so good to have you back again with us for our Wednesday night Bible study. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the Old Testament, uh, to the book of Psalms, chapter 63. The book of Psalms, chapter 63. Uh, we're continuing our series, uh, Revive Us Again. And uh, honestly, tonight will be our last night with this. And... Um, so we talk, We all know the theme verse of it is found in uh, chapter 85 and verse 6 that David said, Wilt thou not? He cried unto the Lord, Revive or restore us unto thee, so that we can rejoice in him, so that we can give God the honor. And um, so tonight, let's open in prayer and we'll get started. Lord, we're so grateful uh, for your love and your mercies. Thank you for all the teachings that you provide for us um, through your word, coupled with your spirit, and how it just brings us closer to you. Help us tonight to take your word. Allow your word to penetrate our minds and then our hearts and then our lifestyle so we can be a witness of your saving grace. In Christ's name we pray, amen. All right, guys, revive us again. I don't know about you, but there's a lot of times in my spiritual walk where it gets a little tiresome, it gets a, a little old and dull, I guess you could say, and it's not on God's part, it's because of me, uh, or I've allowed situations to drag me down. Uh, and we all need that. We all need uh, God to restore us, to give us something new, a fresh a breath, you know, a breath of fresh air and uh, working within us. So this is what uh, David was talking about. And we're going to look tonight at a passage of Scripture uh, that I think will help us and encourage you. Uh, Psalms chapter 63 and verse 1. It says, O God, thou art my God. Uh, we see David uses this phrase a lot. Now, David is not being repetitive for the sake of being repetitive. It's not like he said, okay, I think this Psalms need to have, needs this particular wordage, and I'm just going to continue to put, the, put it in there. You know, it's not being, he's not being repetitive like that. We have to remember the culture in which David lived in. And the culture in which they lived in the people thought there were many gods. I mean, tons of gods. Um, and David here, when he says this, he is proclaiming his allegiance to God alone. You know, to the Holy One. And so when we see this phrase, Oh God, Thou art my God. Sometimes we kind of read it and slide on through. But we have to remember that David is identifying with God the Father. And he is showing his allegiance to him. Early in verse 1, uh, Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee. In a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Uh, early I will seek thee. Now this is talking about, uh, of course, uh, probably when he was on the run. And he was living in the desert. Um, he says, uh, early I seek thee, my soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh, you know, is dry and weary and uh, there's no water to be found. Well, I think this, we're getting a picture of David's spiritual appetite. Yes, physically, he would get thirsty. Yes, spiritually or physically, he would get hungry. He would get tired. But more so spiritually, he was hungry and thirsty to be closer to God. That was his deepest desire. His deepest desire while he was out in, you know, on the run was not the physical. His deepest desire was the spiritual. To me, we could probably stop right here and camp out for a while. Because this is something that we all need to evaluate. Do we have that desire? Do we have that desire to get closer to the Father? Do we have that desire to get to know Christ? Get to know Him through His Word, through His Spirit? 
Do we have that desire? And we see that David had. And he said, he uses the word early. And I, I believe it's not only in the sense of early in the morning, but I believe it connects with the idea of an eagerness. And immediately he desired the satisfying presence of God. It's kind of like when you wake up in the morning, what's the first thing that comes to mind? You're getting ready for work, you're getting ready for school, your day, whatever it is. Uh, you may be retired, you may be at home. Whatever your situation is, when you get up and start your day, is spending time with God the first thing that comes across? Is it the second or third thing that pops into your mind? Does it make the top 50, <laughs> you know? David said this, even while I'm physically hungry, I'm physically thirsty, I am so eager to spend time in your presence early in the day, early in the morning, but we'll see it's all throughout the day. But this was his appetite. This was his desire to be satisfied in the presence of God. Now, let's look at verse 2. To see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. How did David's spiritual appetite grow? We see right here in verse 2. To see thy power and thy glory. That's part of what David wanted to see. He wanted to see God work and God's presence. But I, as so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. He did not say that, God, I, I experience your power. I experience your presence. And I want to see you work in my church. I want to see you work in our church here in the community. I want to see you work in a church where my family goes. You know, uh, I want to, That's not what David was saying. David said this, because I've seen how you work in the sanctuary, I've seen how you work in the church, I desire to see that in my own personal life. That's something we need to stop and think about. That is something that only we as God's children can get whenever we are in worship together. And I, I'm so thankful for modern technology and uh, Rob and all that he does to provide us with uh, the ability to do Bible study right now online and James behind the scenes working too to get it up on the Facebook and uh, the web page for the church. And that's great. I appreciate that. It's been a very big help to us. But there's something though still about being in the presence of others about having other people around. I don't know about you. I miss people. I get tired hanging around by myself all the time. You know, in the office, I, I got to be around people. You know, I got to be around people. And this is what David says. Because of what I went through in worship, because of what how I see you work, God, or how I've seen you work in the past, Man, it has helped me because that's where I've seen you at work the most, and that's what I desire now. Warren Wiersbe says this, It is our regular worship that prepares us for the crisis. The crisis that we experience in life. It's through our regular worship. Now, in context here, uh, I think he's talking about our corporate worship. But we do know our personal worship is our personal time with the Father. But here, I believe, um, when Warren Wiersbe made that statement, he's talking about our worship together as a whole. That it sets the tone for everything else. Whenever we come to church... Do we expect God to be working in power and glory? Do we expect God to, like in verse 2, to see thy power and thy glory, as I've seen you do it in church? 
That's what I pray about. I want to see God work in our church, not only during the week, but when we come together on Sundays, that he does things that we can't explain. Because that's all about him. That's all about him. You know, I was reading about some Christians um, in an area where they are really persecuted for their beliefs. I mean, their lives are put on the line just for attending a Bible study, just for attending maybe a small worship gathering. But yet... They go and they do. And they may meet for hours. Not just in the presence of each other, but basking in the power, the glory, the majesty of the Father. David said, <laughs> because I seek you, there's an eagerness there. And God developed that spiritual eagerness, that desire from his time in the sanctuary. All right, look in verse 3. It says, Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Uh, we don't actually use the word loving kindness as much today. That's what we would say unfailing love. God's love is unfailing. It, matter of fact, God's love is so good, it's better than life itself. If we kind of had to put, reword it in our language today, uh, that's what David's saying, that his love is better than life itself. And because of that, in verse 3, my lips shall praise thee. David was determined to vocally praise God. He was determined to do it. He was going to do it. He could not help but do it. And you say, well, how could he not help but do it? Remember, he was experiencing God's power earlier in verse 2. He was talking about how that God, he saw God at work and his glory and all those things. And when you're in the very presence of God and you're yielding yourself to him, there's times it's just going to come out of your mouth. You can't help it because it's an overflow of your heart. And here we see that uh, David is basically saying, when you go back and look at the original language, uh, he's going to praise God because he's not going to be ungrateful and rude. Have you ever met a rude person? Someone that's ungrateful, maybe? Kind of like a bull in a china shop when it comes to people's feelings or emotions and uh, rude, ungrateful. Um, Man, and I'll be honest, those are kind of hard people if that's their personality. And, you know, on the, as pretty much that's the way they are. I mean, it's, we all are a little un rude and can be ungrateful from time to time. But as a, an individual that's co constantly like that, they're not fun people to be around. David's saying this, God, I'm not going to be rude. I'm not going to be ungrateful. I am going to praise you vocally, and that's what it's talking about here. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to lift your name up. Verse 4 says this, Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. David says, I'm going to bless you. And we went over this before during this series of Revive Us Again and looking at a lot of the different Psalms. When David says, I will bless thee, it's not like David has something that God needs. And God cannot wait for David to give it to him. That's not what it's talking about. Uh, we would use the word, I will praise thee. Or the phrase, I will praise thee. Uh, and that's what David's saying. It blesses and honors God when his children acknowledge him appropriately. When his children acknowledge him appropriately. It's amazing. You know, we want 
our children, our family members, our friends to at least recognize us when we're out in public or when we're at home or when we're at church or just going through our daily routine in life. And, you know, it, it's wonderful most of the time when we have family around. Every once in a while we need a little peace and quiet. But yet, it's, it's good to have family around. David says this, When I'm in your presence, Father, I will praise you. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to acknowledge who you are, no matter where I'm at. One of the greatest places we can do it is not only in our quiet time, not only during our daily routine of life, but when we're together in the sanctuary, when we're able, like David said, to see his power and his glory, and we're able to praise his name and give him honor. He says, I will lift up my hands in thy name. Um, the lifting up of hands was not only a common posture of prayer among the ancient Hebrews, it was especially appropriate for praise. It displayed an anticipation of greatly receiving from God. Wow. Whenever they came to worship, they would vocally sing. They would sing their hearts out. They would, from their, I mean, heart overflowing. And they would lift their hands up. And they would be honoring God for who he is, but also it was anticipating that God was going to get them. And he was going to help them. And I've used this illustration before, I know. It's like when a little baby starts walking and, uh, you know, and they're on their own and then all of a sudden they come up to you and they start reaching up, you know, they're wanting something and they're needing you to pick them up. And that's what we're doing as Christians when we lift our hands to him in praise and honor. It's in, in anticipation of what's to come. That's amazing. And also, it is a sign of surrender. A sign of surrender. Verse 5 says this, my soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. I don't know about you, but we like to eat at the nut house. And uh, there is nothing better than, I guess one of my favorite meals is probably steak, of course. And uh, there's nothing better. Uh, than having a big old ribeye that's medium with a loaded baked potato. And, uh, oh, my goodness gracious. And um, But right up there with it would be the buffet at Krabby Mike's in Myrtle Beach for all those crab legs. Oh, my goodness. We only get to do that once every so often, but though that's wonderful all right and they don't even have to pay me to do a commercial for them you know and it's like we leave there and it's like oh we can't move a muscle you know there's times we've went to a restaurant and the the portions were so big and they were so good and it's like oh somebody help me to the car <laughs> you know david says this God, you satisfy me more than the best steak I've ever had in my life. You satisfy me more than the best seafood buffet that's in this world. God, you satisfy me more than any of that. And whenever David was satisfied in God, it's a picture of deep satisfaction. Deep satisfaction. We should be the same way. If we're not, then something's wrong somewhere. Verse 6. When I remember thee upon my bed and uh, meditate on thee in the night watches. Not only did David think it was important to seek God, I believe, early uh, in the morning, but also at night. It's almost as if David's saying, wow, I don't have enough time in the day to always think about God, even though I try. 
you know, and to give him the honor that he did, that he is due, uh, the just, justice that he he should have. And it's kind of like David is laying there, or kind of talking about laying there, and we're not yet asleep, and our mind is just going on, and, and it's like he reigns it all in, and he begins to focus on God. Now, that's my interpretation of this verse. Um uh, how much do we really focus and think about God? Not only allowing ourselves early, but during the day and even at night. Just allowing ourselves to focus on the Father. Just to focus on Him. Verse 7. Because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. <laughs> this is a common theme uh, that David likes. And uh, it's to express his security and his submission due to the protection of the Father. Just as the wings of a mother hen, a mother bird, protects the small ones. I'd read a story about two weeks ago, and it was just, it was crazy because it was just a partial story. And But there was a fire, and um, this mama bird had protected her little ones. And after the fire was put out, of course, the mama bird had died. But when they turned her over, the little baby birds took off. That's amazing that that mother protected and gave her life for her little ones. This is what David says, In the shadow of thy wings I will rejoice. Lord, when it gets hard, I'm going to rejoice. It's easy to rejoice when it's good, but when you're protecting me, when you are Always there providing me security and strength. I'm going to give you honor. Verse 8 as we close. My soul followeth heart after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. My soul followeth hard after thee. That means to cling to and to follow close. To cling to and a following close. It's a picture of being glued together. You know, that, that's what the Hebrew language is, is trying to picture that. That there is a strong bond there. And David says this, My soul followeth hard after thee. I'm going to seek you, Father, with all I have. And all that I've got. It's amazing what God is able to do. Revive us. Restore us. Renew us so we can have a fresh anointing of your Spirit. Not just for our sakes, Father, but so that we can rejoice in you. It's amazing what David can teach us in his life and through God's Word. All right, guys. I want to say thank you for being with us tonight in just a commercial uh, starting uh, next Wednesday night, uh, we're going to be doing a series um, on engaging the enemy. And on Wednesday nights, we're going to be looking uh, in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, about the spiritual armor. And as Christians, we're going to take a little time. And I've preached on that before um, but you kind of do it like in a message. We're going to break it down a little bit more in depth uh, over the next few Wednesday nights. So I want to encourage you to be thinking about that. And uh, we so appreciate you being with us. Hope you have a great week. Good night and God bless.